Good morning, everyone. This meeting is called to order. Mr. Trobman, has anyone signed up for public comment? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Gonzalez. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. On agenda item three, do we have any cases to reconsider? We have no cases under agenda item three. How about tax liability cases under agenda item four? We do have two tax liability cases under agenda item four. Starting with TB 21030921, Commissioner Demerson. I agree with staff recommendation. Commissioner Alvarez. I agree with staff's recommendation. And Mr. Chairman. I agree with staff recommendation. The second case is 21032102, Commissioner Demerson. I agree with staff recommendation. Commissioner Alvarez. I agree with staff's recommendation. And Mr. Chairman? I agree with staff recommendation. Thank you. No fair housing cases under agenda item five. There are no fair housing cases under agenda item five. Let's move to agenda item six. We have no wage claim cases on docket 48 pulled for additional discussion. There are no wage, excuse me, there are no wage claim cases pulled for additional discussion on docket 48. However, you should have received the short form dissent list. I move to accept staff recommendations on the remaining wage claim cases on docket 48. Chairman, I second the motion, except for those cases on which I'm dissenting as reflected on the wage claim short form dissent list for docket 48. And I concur with the chairman's motion, except for those cases on which I'm dissenting as reflected in the wage claim short form dissent list for docket 48. Motion passes with the exceptions noted. Let's move to agenda item seven, in consideration of unemployment insurance cases on docket 48. Please proceed when you're ready. We are ready. Case 2501449, Commissioner Alvarez. The AT decision should be modified. Both parties agreed that the claimant's minor child had a serious medical condition that prevented her from continuing to work. The employer argued that the claimant did not request FMLA, but it is the employer's legal obligation to provide information and the required documents for an employee to complete when the employer has reason to know that the employee may be eligible for FMLA. The employer failed to do so in this case. The claimant therefore was unaware that she may be eligible for FMLA and that she could protect she could protect her job while she cared for her minor child. The claimant was separated due to a medical verified medical medical verified condition of her minor child, and she should be disqualified. She should not be disqualified. Modify the AT. No good cause for her non-appearance at AT two. No good cause for the non-appearance AT one. No voluntary leave. Uh, we should affirm the AT decision concerning good cause for missing the AT two hearing. The claimant failed to pay her phone bill, resulting in her phone getting disconnected. Although the claimant received the hearing notice advising her of the time and date of the hearing, she failed to make adequate arrangements to call the commission. As such, the claimant did not have good cause for her failure to appear at the AT2 AT hearing. The AT2 decision should therefore remain in full force and effect. Regarding the good cause for missing the first hearing, I agree that the claimant did not have good cause for missing the AT1 hearing. Concerning the job separation, although we sympathize with the claimant concerning her child's health concerns, she did not take the requisite steps to protect her job. The claimant did not provide the employer with any indication of the amount of time she needed off, nor did she apply for FMLA. As such, we should affirm the AT decision. The claimant did not have good cause for her non-appearance at AT2. The claimant did not have good cause for her non-appearance at AT1, voluntary leaving. Reverse the AT, claim established good cause for AT2 and AT1, resubmit. I'm sorry, could you repeat your vote, Mr. Chairman? Claimant established good cause for AT2 and AT1, resubmit. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez, I would agree with Commissioner, I mean with Chairman Daniel. Thank you. Case 2741528, Commissioner Alvarez. The decision should be reversed. Due to the pandemic, the claimant's unit was changed from caring for a long-term patients to acutely ill patients. At that time, the nurses were told there would be one nurse for every 10 patients. During her final shift, the claimant had 16 patients. She requested assistance and was only given a nurse aide, a nurse's aide who could not perform the required task. The claimant made several more requests for assistance, such as a, medica a medication aid. 
However, the claimant was not provided assistance and was instead sent home one hour into her shift. While the employer alleged that the claimant walked off the job, the employer only presented secondhand testimony. As such, the greater weight of the evidence indicates that the claimant was discharged for requesting assistance, which is not misconduct. Reverse EAT, no misconduct, bill reimbursement employer, correction bill employer, and several adequate response. I'd also be open to a rehear to admit, to admit the text messages the claimant included in her CA appeal. Uh, we should modify the AT decision. Uh, the claimant was on final warning with the employer for poor job performance. On August 21st, 2020, although the claimant alleged that the work was too much for her to handle, the employer provided credible testimony that they were willing and was attempting to provide the claimant with the necessary help. The claimant knowing that the employer was understaffed refused to, refused to work by clocking out and thereafter left the employer's place of business. Being on final warning, the claimant should have known that refusal of work could lead to termination. The claimant's failure to perform her assigned work constituted insubordination. Hence, we should modify the AT decision, misconduct, reimburse an employer not bill, sever the adequate response issue. Read here. We will rehear the case. Case 2896273, Commissioner Demerson. Uh, the appeal tribunal decision should be modified. I agree that the employer's appeal is timely. As to the job separation, the claimant was discharged for violating the employer's policy regarding drugs and hostile work environments. The employer witness stated that the claimant admitted to smoking marijuana at work. The witness further stated he was unaware of the claimant's activity prior to another witness bringing it to his attention. In addition, the claimant was a participant in an affair with the employer's witness's daughter-in-law, which the employer stated created a hostile work environment since both the daughter-in-law and her husband worked for the employer. In all, the claimant's actions were not in the best interest of the employer and constituted work-connected misconduct. We should therefore modify the AT decision, timely employer appeal, misconduct, no chargeback, adequate employer response. The decision is supportable. I do not contest the timeliness of the employer's appeal. Regarding the job separation, the claimant testified that management was aware of his habits during breaks. The employer did not take issue until the claimant began an affair with the president of the company's daughter-in-law. The claimant's affair did not violate any employer's policy. The claimant has not committed misconduct related to the work. Affirm the AT timely appeal, no misconduct chargeback. <clears throat> Modify the AT, timely employer appeal, misconduct, no chargeback, adequate employer response. Short form dissent. I have your short form dissent, Commissioner Alvarez. Case 2923898, Commissioner Alvarez. The AT decision is not supportable. The claimants stopped working when he became ill with COVID and needed to be quarantined. His daughter then became ill, thereby extending his quarantine. When he and his family were over COVID, he no longer had a job to return to. The claimant later had a one-day temporary job on March 22nd of 2021. We should encourage individuals receiving PUA benefits to participate in temporary and part-time jobs without jeopardizing their access to their only source of income while they attempt to obtain full-time employment. The claimant's one-day temporary assignment did not change the nature of his unemployment and should not be disqualifying, should not disqualify him from the receipt of PUA. Reverse the AT, no PUA ineligibility at beginning March 21st, 2021 PUA eligible from January 3rd, 2021 to June 26, 2021. Uh, the AT decision is supportable. The record shows that the claimant met the eligibility requirements for the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program in the first several weeks of his claim. And, I'm in, uh, and I am in agreement with that conclusion. However, the claimant's testimony shows that he became unemployed on March 22nd, 2021 due to a reason that had nothing to do with the pandemic. Based on that evidence, the hearing officer correctly found that the claimant was ineligible for PUA benefits starting with the benefit week beginning on March 21, 21st, 2021. Accordingly, we should affirm the AT decision. The claimant was eligible for PUA benefits through March 20th, 2021, but became ineligible for PUA benefits beginning March 21st, 2021. Affirm the AT, claimant is not eligible for PUA beginning March 21st, 
short form dissent? I have your short form dissent, Commissioner Alvarez. Case 2965816, Commissioner Demerson. The commission should grant a rehearing in this case. Uh, the employer discharged the, the claimant due to allegedly falsifying inspection reports. The employer stated that it referred to inspection numbers in its submission to the commission, but did not provide the reports themselves. A review of these reports would be useful in reaching a proper dis disposition to this case, as it would provide clarity on the specific discrepancies that led to the claimant's termination. As such, we should rehear the case to obtain copies of the claimant's inspection reports and allow the parties to provide testimony connected thereto. The decision should be affirmed. The claimant was discharged solely based on the employer's GPS records, indicating that the claimant was not close enough to wells he inspected. However, the employer did not visit the sites, did not interview the claimant, did not interview anyone else who may have been on the site, and did not violate the accuracy of their GPS records. The claimant credibly explained that due to geographic, geographic restrictions, he occasionally had to walk a great distance or ride with another worker. As such, the employer has not presented sufficient evidence to overcome the claimant's firsthand denial. Affirm the AT, no misconduct, bill, bill employer. Affirm the AT, no misconduct, bill reimbursement employer. Short form dissent. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, short form dissent. Okay, thank you. I have your short form dissent, Commissioner Demerson. And that is the last of the uh, cases pulled for additional discussion on docket 48. You should have received the short form dissent list. I move we accept staff recommendations on the remaining UI cases on docket 48. I second the motion except for those cases in which I'm dissenting as reflected on UI short form dissent list for docket 48. I concur with the chairman's motion except for the cases on which I'm dissenting as reflected in the UI short form dissent list for docket 48. Motion passes with the exception of no. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any other order of business come before the commission? Nobody's rushing to the microphone. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? Chairman, I move that we adjourn. I second that motion. Been moved and seconded to adjourn and we're adjourned.